Welcome to the Home Group Podcast, where we discuss everything addiction, recovery, mental health. I am Flip. And I am Luke. Our generation of men, you're not allowed to have feelings. We're going to talk about things that are uncomfortable, things that are scary, because when you talk about it, you take away its power. The only thing that's going to keep me clean is me not wanting to be who I was then. Welcome to another episode of the Home Group Podcast. I am Flip, clean date April Fools 2016. And I am Luke, and my clean date is October 11th, 2017. Hi, I'm Tiffany, and my clean date is November 26, 2012. We are so excited you're here to join us. Um, super excited. Super excited. This is big. Huge. Well, yeah. let's Monumental. Lower the bar a little. And okay. I'm excited to be here. Well, thank you. We appreciate you joining us. Those of you that don't know, I've known you through my wife for ever. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Yeah, she's my best friend. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. So, so glad you're here. Uh, what we do here, a little life check in, and then we are going to go ahead and get into today's show. Luke, life check in. What's going on? What's cooking? Um, I am recovering from the most traumatic dodgeball experience I've ever had in my life. And I grew up in Southside Chicago. Okay. So that should tell you. Big dodgeball scene up there. Yeah, no, well, yeah. Okay. There's a, there's a lot going on in the dodgeball scene in Chicago. But, um, so I went to, uh, somebody's birthday party and they had a uh, dodgeball going on and I underestimated the athleticism of the people on the court i need you to i need you to paint a picture you walk in a gymnasium yeah it's a gymnasium um and the picture that i saw beforehand was like these little tiny like rainbow colored balls so i'm like oh this is gonna be a bunch of kids yeah i walked in there and it was the 96 bowls the starting lineup really i was i'm six two i was the shortest person in that whole gymnasium there was a dude dressed up like ultimate warrior um wow he was doing like finisher moves every time he got somebody out he'd like hit like a yeah thing and it was uh it was bad and now i am just now able to move around this is the first time you're out of the house yeah this is the first time i've been out of bed (laughs) how long has it been it's been it's been about three days three or four days i've been bedridden stop you didn't play dodgeball on monday it's thursday when did you play dodgeball? It's been about a week. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, it's been about a week. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm not happy about it. I know. But I mean, uh, we just, we're honest here. We practice honesty. I'm just a little embarrassed. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Yeah, it was bad. And I've soaked in the tub about 16 times. With? Epsom salt. Okay. Rubber you know, we're all about the details here. Got to get the details. I've been, I've been popping ibuprofen 800s like <laughs> skittles you know what i'm saying yeah. just trying to get back but i'm here you're here and i'm feeling good my life is great glad you're here thanks yeah glad to be here life checking what's cooking <laughs> sorry i don't know what that was okay uh my daughter just broke ground a couple of days ago here's the, no here's the worst part she didn't break it a couple of days ago she broke it over a week ago oh. but she really exaggerates things sometimes like one time she faked an injury all the way from Georgia to Florida. And then as soon as we pulled in the driveway, she's like, just kidding. And hopped out of the car. <laughs> Across state lines. It was seven hours of torture, yeah. screaming, talking her off the ledge. And I'm like, do we go to an ER? And, uh, and she was a liar. <laughs> and so now when she's complaining about her injury, I'm like, oh yeah, whoa, my arm hurts, bitch. But it, um... It, it's, it was broken, so that's my bad. <laughs> uh, technically, it wasn't broken. It's bent, so kids' arms are like wet spaghetti noodles. And so instead of breaking, they just bend. So she had a badoop, and she's wearing a cast. And she's she keeps threatening me with it. Okay. Uh, question, <laughs> question, because I, I know when you got here... Um, somehow that it got brought up and I'm pretty sure Luke said bent and you had an actual name for it. Yeah. It's called a green light light fracture. I was, no, I said the wrong thing. Yeah, it's wrong. I called it a green light 
fracture on social media. I'm like, did you all know? And I was like, <laughs> very <super> informative. <laughs> confident. <laughs> I was. I know things. And and then this x-ray tech was like, it's called a green stick fracture. Because it's like a like a green stick. Because they're more bendy than the brown one. Okay. But fracture is fracture. Yeah. That's not bendy. Well, I didn't invent it. Thomas Edison, I think, is the one. Thomas Edison. What kind of sticks are we talking about? You said it's the green ones more flexible than the brown ones. Yeah. What sticks? You know like the sticks? ripe ones. <laughs> no, like oh. tree sticks. Oh. Yeah. Branches. I'm yes. sorry. You. Your yeah. mind went went to rave. glow sticks. Yeah. I'm always at glow sticks. <laughs> okay. I stay at glow sticks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I could see it. Yeah. 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 No. So sometimes branches, they aren't fully born. <laughs> and so they're a little bendy when they're green. And then when they turn old, they get brown and crackle. It's like, when is a branch of life? You know what I mean? No. I, okay. Okay. A bend is not... I, don't, I feel like it doesn't do the injury justice. Because a fracture is a fracture. A bend is a bend. Yeah. You it know what I mean? It depends on who I'm talking to. If I... If I want people to feel bad for me, I'm like, she broke her arm. Shattered it. It's gone. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> what, have an that's arm. what you said when you walked through the door. I wanted you to feel bad for me. Okay. My daughter's arm's at the park. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. you're talking about amputees, prosthetics. We, we can't find it. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's somewhere. But it's a bend. It but is. it's a fracture. The, listen, Google it. Okay. They call it a fracture. Okay. Because green if light. It, if it wasn't a green stick, it'd be broken. Okay. And, for, and in my defense, if you take green, white, and stick, and you put those three words together, I just n- realized uh, uh, glow stick, right? That's the first thing that comes to mind. No, when she said green light, I was super confused by the whole green light thing because I'm thinking, what does a stoplight have to do with a kid's broken <laughs> yeah. arm? You know what I mean? Did she break it on Does the that stoplight? mean like you broke your kid's arm, you got the green light from the doctors? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's that's Your where wheels my... wheels are turning already. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's a thing? Yeah. Oh, so, Jordan's that's what... done. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, yeah. How's yeah. she doing? She's fine. Okay. Um, Did you sign her cast? No. Why? I don't, I, I don't think it's cool for your mom to sign. Yeah, it. it's not. Okay. I've never had a broken bone. No, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think it is. It, Maybe. It, How old no, is she? No, it's not. She's seven. Nah. I mean, it would be cool really? if I did it. Because I am cool, but most moms, it wouldn't be cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a big thing this week because she's using it. Oh, absolutely. That's what she's supposed to do. To her advantage. Of course. And it's getting real old. She used a fake injury all the way from Georgia to Florida. She's yeah. milking this thing for what it's worth. You got about three more weeks of it. Mm-hmm. It's the different times that we live in. I remember when I was a kid, only break that I've ever had, my pinky... Shattered my pinky. Terrified to tell my dad. I told him, hey, it was like a week later, my pinky's like this big. I'm like, hey, we might have to go to the hospital. And he's like, listen, if we go there and I bring you in there and you don't leave there with a cast on, I'm beating your ass. I'm going to break your pinky. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, but my dad was like really good dude. Yeah, he was, but... That day he wasn't. But th- things are different because that's how it was back then. My mom's like, if you're not bleeding or on fire, don't come talk to me. So I talked to the doctor. I said, listen, doc, like... Break this shit if it's not No, broken. like, we... I'm, I need you to wrap this thing Isn't up. that so funny that... Because now that you say that, I threw my leg into a bike sprocket when I was a kid, right? And literally, my calf looked like hamburger helper, dude. <laughs> yeah. And I'm dripping blood all over the house, and I call my mom at work, and she's like, well, I get off at 5.30. You know yeah. what I mean? And when she got home and she saw the trail of blood, she's like, okay, I guess you were... I guess you were right. You know what I mean? But yeah. nowadays, it's like parents. Like, my daughter coughs fun. <laughs> you know, she coughs funny. And I'm like, are you okay? What's going on? I'm feeling the forehead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? We used to stay out all night. All night. I'd be gone all day. All day. If I came back early, my parents would, like, tell me to go again. <laughs> like, go, what are you doing here? Go. Yeah. Go climb a tree or something. <laughs> it's do not you like think, that. Do you think that's better for kids? I think that it's a weird time that we live in right now, and I think that there's a, a lot of like weird like 
stuff happening in the world. Well, if you look, if you look at my opinion, right? So, because I go to that too. Like, when the street lights came on is when I had to be home, right? And we didn't have cell phones back then. We didn't. I'm just out causing havoc in the neighborhood. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I'm all over. Riding bikes everywhere and stuff like that. And you can use the defense that that is a better tactic, but look how I turned out, you know what I mean? Jails and, you know, drug addictions and crazy stuff like that. And a majority of people that I grew up with that live that same way, absolute fucking train wrecks. Well, we don't know. It's like, it's like vaping. Like, we don't know the harmful side effects yet. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know what your kids are going to look like. Yeah. Or my kids or your kids. My kids are going to be pansies. I already know. Absolutely. I coddle them so much. So much. Okay. Are we talking about me or no, you? No, you. No, I'm, okay. I'm talking, talking about you. Because I, we could flip it. You were fair. We could flip it Touché. so hard. Touche. Put that thing down, flip it, and reverse That's it. That's what I was trying to think of, and I couldn't think of it. Okay. I got it. Is this? But yeah, I just, um, I, I wonder, like, which is worse? To give the kids the independence or to make sure they are safe? Or is it somewhere in between? So where I go with it, right, um, when I try to think about... The possibilities, because we don't know, right? All I have is the life that I lived Mm -hmm. and kind of the path that I went. And yeah, things are good now, but fuck, it took a long time to get here, right? My thought process is, and just because it's my thought process, it doesn't mean I do it because I don't. My daughter has me wrapped around her finger Mm -hmm. and she knows it, okay? Bad. She, uh, last night, couldn't get out of bed and go to the toilet because her foot hurt. Mm. So I carried her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you did. To and from the toilet. Okay. So you guys can judge all you want, but that's just my reality, right? But I look at it and the reality is is that's not what life in the real world's like. Right. Life in the real world are hard and yeah. it, they take no prisoners and give no fucks. Yeah, nobody's carrying you to the toilet. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like it's a bummer. Which that's... and maybe maybe it comes in phases. Cuz I've tried to have intellectual conversations with my son but he's just not there mentally yet he's seven years old you know what i mean um so i think it comes in phases at least i hope it does because if i'm carrying my daughter to the toilet at 16 we got (laughs) big problems big problems yeah so i um, wish somebody would carry me to the toilet that's what i'm saying that sounds amazing yeah but that's just because we're old okay yeah, okay. I about had to have somebody carry me to the toilet <laughs> this yesterday. Week. Yeah. Well, you called me on the floor of your shower, okay? Because you weren't sure if you were going to be able to get up. Yeah. Okay? Disgusting. My so watery, watery dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> watery dungeon. We got to get you a life alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're in bad shape. What's we your are... life event? Yeah, what do you... Don't try to skip past yeah. what you got we, going hey, we, on. Hey, we got to talking about the kids, and I just got wrapped up in it. Um, All right, Flip, what do you got going on? My wife hates me. Oh. Now, yeah, ask me what I did. What'd you do? No idea. <laughs> couldn't tell you. I probably could. Yeah, <clears throat> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm curious. For the record, I did nothing except be amazing, okay? I cooked dinner. I bathed kids. I, I get kids ready. I take them to school. I do all this. The reason I say this is because she has been on a 24-7, 365 binge of reality TV. Okay? One thing I hate more than anything in this world is reality TV. I can't yeah. do it because I get embarrassed for people. Yeah, yeah. And there is nothing more cringy than reality. And when I say reality TV, I'm not talking like... I'm trying to think of a good one, but I can't. Okay. <laughs> like the love like the lo- love island type. Blind love or whatever it's called <clears throat> where they're, they can't love see. Is blind. Love is blind. Watch both seasons of those. You've been Temptation. watching them? No, I haven't. But I'm there. I'm getting it by osmosis. Okay? Yeah. I'm there. I am so glued on my phone trying not to look. And yeah, I know that. Kyle is hooking up with Rebecca, but mm-hmm. he wants to be hooking up with Stacy. But that's neither here nor there. Okay? I think you like that shit. I don't. I don't because oh, what the dude say? Oh God, what would he say? So I don't even know what this one is, but it's like a bunch of real estate people up in the Hamptons. Yeah. And the dude said verbatim to a group of females. He's like, they asked him what he did, and he said, "Oh, I work for a dental practice. Like he starts up dental practices, right?" 
And the one girl trying to, I guess, relate, which it was super corny what she did. She said, oh, I had braces for like a <laughs> long time, right? And these are grown adults, okay? <laughs> so like that's, that's weird that you would say that, right? But that's and, not like something I would and say. And do though. you know what he said? Do you know what he said? Do you know what he said? I could probably guess. No, I don't think you can. Okay. He said, if anybody says they don't like you because you had braces, you can just call them a bracist. That's actually kind of funny. Stop. No. Stop. Stop. I didn't see that coming, I'll be honest. Oh, God. I got up. I got up (laughs) out of bed. Dude, I literally, I was laying down. And then I was standing up. There was no in between. I didn't get up. I was laying down. And then I stood up and I said out loud, I said, oh my God. And I looked around and I walked out of the room and I laid in bed with my son. Okay. I laid in bed with my son while he was watching annoying YouTube clips of something. Right. Because that was the better alternative. And my wife came in about 30 minutes later. She said, what? You don't want to lay with me? You don't want to lay with me? And I said, did you hear what he said? You're Braces. That's where that's where I draw the line. Okay. And our yeah. entire relationship up until this point, she knows that, and she has like a couple guilty pleasures, but she always watches them when I'm not around. Now, yeah. no fuck. We're at the point in our marriage, no fucks given. She's like, nah. You should give it a try. I can't. Just try it out. I have been. Do you think your level of animosity towards these shows <clears throat> is normal? No. No, not at all. I know it's not. Listen, when I watch it, like if I didn't have a phone, for some reason my phone blew up and I didn't have a phone and I had to watch it, I would be like this. Really? I can't. What about Naked and Afraid? I might because of the survivalist. I do like like Bear Grylls. Right. You know what I mean? That's a little different. Um, Naked and Afraid is still a little weird for me because like... Why do you have to be naked? Yeah. And why are you... Of course you're afraid. You're naked in the wilderness. Mm. That's scary. Separately yeah. and together. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just can't even think about... You're exposed. Bugs. That's like the ultimate form of exposure, dude. You're naked. Because mm. they have like the regular, uh, you know, survivor yeah. and stuff like that. You got to kick it up a notch. Well, they did. But it's just, I don't... I can't... I've never been able to do it. Even when I go to my kids' place, I get really uncomfortable. Oh, so it's people embarrassing themselves Yeah, makes you embarrassed. Which I, is ironic because I have no problem embarrassing myself. I have no problem making say, an ass out of myself. Look at your friends. How yeah. are you not feeling bad all the time? We are always embarrassing ourselves. Yeah, but it's just, I don't know what it is. I don't know where it came from, but hmm. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so that's been my life. Work come home, cook dinner, and watch reality TV until I cry myself to sleep. In Jordan's bed. Yeah. Watching YouTube. Yeah. (laughs) That's what's going on with me. So um, uh, we weren't sure what we were going to do when we had guests on, and you're our first guest. That's so exciting. Yeah. Um, It's like heavy-duty corduroy. Yeah. I like it. It is? Yeah. It's corduroy? No, that's not corduroy. I mean, it depends on how far away you are from it when you're looking at it. Like right here, it looks not like corduroy. But if you were way back here. Across the street? So I don't know where this podcast took a turn, but I just had both of you rubbing on my pants. Mm -hmm. Um, So, okay. Um, Corduroy. Okay. Okay. Um, It's not corduroy. It's not. Because I'm. What would you call that then? Not six years old in 1988. Okay. Okay. But you don't fu- you don't mess with corduroy. I don't own any corduroy. Do you remember the bear? Yeah. Corduroy. Pat Paddington. No, I don't. No. His name the was bear. corduroy. Really? Corduroy the bear. Why did I think it was Paddington? Well, that's a that's separate guy. I know bear. that's I know that's another bear. They have a lot of similarities, though. I feel like they were both wearing like rain hats. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the bucket hat, but it was like the rain hat. Right? Was that Curious George? No, oh, Curious George man. had no hats. The dude that was with Curious George had a yellow hat. What was his name? Jeff. Jeff? <laughs> no. Fankelstein. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Sorry. Um, wow, we go down some <clears throat> wild paths here. We didn't want to do an interview type thing. We wanted to just keep the show how we 
I've been doing the show, so we got a topic. I asked Tiffany what she wanted to talk about. What did you want to talk about? You don't remember? Yes, this is why we do this. Do did I see? say I wanted to talk about something? I literally said this exact thing that I'm saying on camera. I said to you, and you said, then, you know what I would love to talk about? And I said, what's that, Tiffany? And you said... And then he even relayed it to me. I know what you wanted to talk about. Because I wanted all of us to be in the loop. Not what we were going to talk about, but the topic. I can't stop looking at this corduroy. Uh, it's not corduroy. So what you had said... You would... <gasps> oh, yeah. Okay, you remember. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, don't. I thought okay. I did, but I okay. don't. Okay, <laughs> so what you said was um, dealing with things, right, in recovery. Mm. Good, bad, different, exciting. I think it's safe to say in recovery, it's a roller coaster, right? Good time. Um, learning how to deal with emotions, process emotions. You know, I could, for both of you, think about cool stuff that I would like to talk about, but... Let's do it. No. Okay. What? <laughs> That's not what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. Because, I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm saying like I could think of something like, you know what I mean? You, early in recovery, you got pregnant. Like that's that that's intense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, your whole, basically your life is super interesting to me. You already know with you, we could talk about some things. I got so, a lot. A lot. So do you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead, Flip. Yeah. Dealing with... If you don't stop rubbing my pants. It is weird that he keeps... I think the thing about recovery is, for so long, my one and only coping mechanism was the pills. And so I picture it like I had this toolbox, and in it was the pills. So if I was happy, reached in there and grabbed one to celebrate. If I was stressed out, reached in to grab one to calm me down. No matter what was going on in my life, good or bad, it was my go-to. And then when I got arrested and went to rehab, my toolbox was emptied. And I'm like, wait, I have to just feel things now and deal with them. And I never would have known what to put in my toolbox if it wasn't for surrounding myself with people in recovery who taught me coping skills. And so the thing about life is it doesn't stop. The difference now is, you know, I'm present for it. And I just have to figure out ways to deal with each thing that comes up. And I couldn't do it without my friends and without people like you encouraging me and giving me words of wisdom. You know what's interesting about that is I had an actual toolbox with pills in it. Oh an actual God. toolbox. Wow. Yeah. I went to school with a girl who was a pharmacist and she like hit me up. This was like the MySpace days. And she was like, oh, you want to meet me at the movie theater? And I thought like... I know why you want to be at the movie theater. Popcorn. Right? right? And so um, I pull up and she's like, get in my car. And I'm like, okay, we're just getting straight to this, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I hop in the passenger seat and she's like, pulls out a fishing tackle box. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. It, wasn't, it was a tackle box. It was a tackle box. I had a tackle box. Really? I had a tackle box. Wow. They're just so like... Of drugs? <laughs> yeah, well, when you say it like that, I mean... <laughs> I mean, you guys are saying it pretty casual. Yeah, but it's so practical. It's, it's got so some little... practical. It's perfect division. So not, and you can take them out and you can like, oh, yeah. man, these bags are a little bit bigger than these and ones. And like, I used to like, over. I used to like pretend to be like a drug dealer, right? Like, even though I would just like buy some weed and I would put some in some like little <laughs> dime bags and I would have them in there but i would just end up smoking them like i never really like yeah. you know what i mean yeah like if a, if a homie was like oh you got any weed i'm like yeah would, you know me uh, what were you looking for yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i actually had an actual i mean tackle box toolbox you know tomato yeah. tomato but an actual okay green and tan rolodex of drugs yeah right, with the with the Next with the cool. shelf the shelf you know yeah. the little oh, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. That's the noise it makes. Uh, I clink, never, clink, clink. It was... It never... No. Do -do. It yeah. never made that noise. It never clink, made clink, that. Clink, clink, clink. Do -do. You know what I'm talking about? Do -do. That's the Do -do. sound you make when you go over a speed bump. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but I agree wholeheartedly with what you said because every happy, sad, mad, good, bad, rainy, sunny, no matter what, I had you know, drugs for that. So learning how to live all over again and do things. And that's why, you know, the rehab we go into, right? I tell the guys all the time how important it is to have a support group of people that you connect with for different reasons. So like for me, um, you know, I used to like to fight 
and had anger issues and I heard a guy over and over at meetings who was an angry guy, you know what I mean? But he had managed to figure out how to control it. And so he's in my support group. So when I get road rage and feel like driving my truck through everybody, I pick up the phone and call him. Babs, who I'm sure will be on here at some point, um, was kind of my... Dad? No. No, Babs. no, no, no. no. Like your dad? Like, because he's such a good dad? Is he the guy you yes. call about yeah. parenting yes. stuff? Yes, yes, yes. That's what I think of when I think of him. He's such a good dad. Yeah, and so, and he's got a great way of every time I call him and I'm like, you'll never guess what. And he's like, oh, really? Okay. And then I just, I literally hear like glass breaking in the background and I hear, I always hear a tiger roar. I don't know what that's about, <laughs> but you know, there's every time. As a matter of fact, I called him probably a couple weeks ago and it was dead quiet in the background. And I was, I said, do we need to call the police? Did, yeah. It was, What's happening? Yeah. Did you, Are did you, you finally, were you fed up? I guess, is everybody dead? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, we got a baby free night. I said, oh God, I've never heard your house that mm. quiet. So I think it's important to find those people early in recovery, right? A lot of times it's shame, maybe. Reach it, to to reach out and to say you're struggling with something. Um, I mean, shit. I didn't. I had a terrible credit score when I first got clean, and I didn't know how to fix it. You know what I mean? Like when I say bad, like what? Four twenty. Ironically enough. I mean, I feel like that's not that bad. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, I don't. I went to get a. Me. I went to get a car, and they laughed at me. Like not like, like in to my face. Like when they pulled up my credit record, report, the sales guy laughed. Rude. Yeah. So, um, and I didn't know how to fix it, but so I shared about it in a meeting, you know, and then somebody was like, Oh, you got to do this. And I was like, all right, let me get your number. And like, I leaned on that person and had the willingness to, I didn't, I didn't care. Like I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired that if I didn't know how to tie my shoes right, I would ask somebody about it. You know what I mean? So I think that that's super important in early recovery is to build that network of people because we don't know how to live and how to deal with things. I think it's harder for guys, isn't it? To like ask for help and admit that you need help. Oh yeah. I don't ever admit anything. And then I make counter accusations. But is it harder or is it because of the ego? Yeah. It's probably because... No, it absolutely is because of the ego. Yeah, it's definitely because of the ego. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah. Well, uh, but harder, I don't... No, it's not because it's not hard for... It's not hard for you to talk to me about stuff. No, I could talk to you about stuff, but like, you know, when you're growing up, you talk like... Uh, fucking... What am I going to talk to my dad about feelings? Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm wrong because I'm a woman and I can't speak on it, but like guys are taught like... If you're, if you cry, you're a wuss. If you show your emotions, you're a pussy. And so I think a lot of generations of kids are, um, you know, programmed to think that it's weakness. And so even as adults, you kind of still feel that way. And it sucks because it closes you off to so many amazing opportunities for growth. But I know so many people who are like that. And I think that guys like you doing this podcast and talking about stuff that people feel weird talking about is going to make a huge difference, just being vulnerable. You know, for me, like, I was raised by, like, women. You know what I mean? Like, my mom was a single mom until she met my stepdad. But, you know, she worked like crazy. I was either with her or with my aunts or with my grandma. And so, like, I was always encouraged to talk about feelings. Mm. So, so it was never it, it was never hard for me, but ironically enough, through my addiction and living that lifestyle, you never show anybody your true motives or your right. true so that definitely, you know, closed me off a little bit, but it's not hard for me to, you know, flip that switch. People in early recovery, right? And I'll just take the rehab that we go into. A lot of these guys 30, 45 days clean. Just stop shaking the skin and bones, but now they have ego. Like now they're too proud hmm. to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. feelings. And that's why I tell them all the time, like, well, hold on. Who I shot dope with toilet water. Yeah. <laughs> but now I got I got 13 days clean and I'm too, I'm the man now, so I can't talk about feelings. Mm. Right. If you really do some self analysis, right? And if you have that self awareness to like, well, let's let's take it down a notch, right? Like, I'm here, I earned 
this spot that I'm in right now. Some people have the willingness, some don't. And, you know, everybody's on their own journey. I had to go to jails and rehab multiple times before I finally got it. So. I had a prison bid under my belt when I was 21. Mm. Jesus Christ. That's crazy. But, like, you were talking about your dad and your finger. So yeah. I imagine you couldn't go up Thank to him you. and be like, Dad, I'm, I'm feeling a little depressed. Today. Yeah, I'm the youngest of four boys. If I, you don't talk, you didn't talk about feelings in my household growing up. Hmm. That's not something that you expressed. So when it came time for me to discuss my feelings, it was like, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't, I guess I joke around a lot. I make a lot of jokes and I mask all that behind a this uh veal of of jokes veal veil veil, no. veil no. of jokes veal it's like a baby cow yeah that's cow baby. meat this mm-hmm. cow meat of <laughs> comedy you know what i mean i get it it's a coping mechanism though yeah. it's yeah. a way to keep people away do the same thing yeah even talking about that though it doesn't even it doesn't click for me i still don't see it yeah but you were so screwed when you became friends with me because i just keep digging mm-hmm. yeah but i think that that's yeah, important so. to get to that stuff because now you have no problem telling, I think it's eight people now, now that we got Tiffany on, there's eight people watching. <laughs> eight so, people, um, you know what I mean? One million? Yep. Like, yeah. share, and subscribe? <laughs> okay. Listen, I've buried more people than I can remember. Mm. And dealing with that, I've hugged mothers from, like, kids that I grew up with that died mm. and had them ball in my arms, right? And, like, so surreal in that moment but there's also so many good things my entire life i thought i had this fear of failure right but through a lot of work i realized that i had a fear of success yeah and so when good things happen i tend to self-sabotage because subconsciously i don't feel like i deserve it building this house right from the kid that in brand new and recovery had a 420 credit score and got laughed at to get a beater car from a dealership to being able to build and pay the mortgage on a house. Huge. I mean, huge. And it's so fucking cool. Like, I remember when when you got the, your car, you know what I mean? The Celestial Starship. Yeah, the Celestial Cruiser. Toyota Camry. Why is it a Celestial Cruiser? What's the paint name? Celestial Silver. Yeah, that's the name of the thing. So we just, um, so... Uh, the job you have now where you are financially secure and able to do things and able to help people and do shit like that. Like, so cool to get to see and experience. It seems that the network that I build, when sh- that I built, when shit hit the fan, like, I didn't even have to think about it. My crew showed up. Like, when my daughter was born and she was premature and we had to do the emergency C-section, you know, when they pulled her out, I'm just hyper-focused on my wife because her insides are on a side table. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they pulled a baby out and I'm looking at her and I look over and the nurse is doing CPR Mm. on my daughter. My wife says, I don't feel so good. And I look back and she is white, this color, and not knowing what was going to happen because the lungs are the last thing to develop and so she wasn't breathing on her own and it was this whole thing right but because of the the support group that i built like people were what do you need what do you need Mm. uh somebody went to the house grabbed a bag of clothes for us you know what i mean you came just the way that people showed up and show up in adversity it's almost like i don't have to do it on my own i don't even have to think about it um but in those good times i think that those can be just as dangerous because i know for a long time it was for me i always set the bar like okay i got to do this i got to do this i got to do this and then when i accomplish that i'm like well you know what i deserve to get high i think it's important that the good experiences get talked about as well. You know what I mean? Like, what's a good experience for you? Everything from being able to pay my bills on time to raising children to writing a book. Um, How was that? Writing a book? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I, it was not my plan. I would write a chapter and put it out on the internet once a week and people just got they were like what happens next and they were like crazy about it and then this one lady was like i would give anything to be able to send this to my son in jail it is so good and then a light bulb went off 
And I was like, Google, how do you write a book? And then how do you format it? And how do you self-publish? Because I don't know how to do any of this. And so I Googled it and I did it and it, it was a success and it got picked up by a publishing company. And that was never in the realm of possibilities back in jail when I was trying to end my life and I was looking at the future and it was just black. If you would have been like, by the way, you're going to be a best-selling author and a speaker and a mom and a good friend, I would have laughed in your face. You, I could have sat around that jail all day imagining my future and it never would have been as beautiful as it is. Damn, that's crazy. Writing a book. That's like, a, that's, that's bucket list. Published author. Yeah. That's crazy. It's nuts. You're working on another one, too, aren't you? I just submitted my second manuscript. Ooh, <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Probably not, but. No, you did. I uh, haven't told anyone. Uh, plugged. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so, Luke, good stuff. Oh, everything, man. My life is amazing today. I can remember waking up in the morning, getting to the gas station with Sonny to panhandle a few bucks to put in his gas tank to get to a Home Depot to steal something, to return it at a different Home Depot, mm -hmm. bring it to a pawn shop, this disgusting cycle, this never-ending cycle. And like today, I mean, even like something as simple as just waking up and having a cup of coffee in the morning, mm -hmm. it's like, how did I get here? You know what I mean? All those years that I destroyed my life, all the years that I was a horrible father and all that. Today, it's amazing. Today's beautiful. Hearing you talk about waking up and having a, a cup of coffee and how amazing it is, it really makes me think it takes work to remind yourself what a miracle that is. Right. Because sometimes I take it for granted and I'm like, things are never good enough. This coffee's getting cold and my coffee maker sucks and... Um, I just, I, I'm so used to living in chaos that I feel like sometimes I create it for myself so that I could have a pity party. I think as an addict, when you make it out the other side and you take a minute to see what a miracle it is to like walk through grass after walking through a jail cell and wondering if you're ever going to be out of there, but you have to like actively remind yourself. That's why I do a, a, a gratitude list every day. Do you really? Yeah. So I'm on a, a group text with a bunch of the guys. I do um, it too. Yeah. Every day? Every day. Every, every morning. Every morning. And I didn't for the first six years of my recovery. I remember what it was like sitting in Sarasota County Jail. And I remember the rain, right? And I'm like, I would give anything mm. to just feel the rain on my skin. Yeah. I would oh, give anything. I yeah, feel yeah. that. Right? But you're absolutely right. It is so easy to lose sight of the hard times where we take stuff for granted. And that's why I do the gratitude list. And perfect example, today, this morning, I didn't do my gratitude list. And Boston Mike called me and he said, what the fuck's your problem? He said, you're not grateful today, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, but that's why I do it. Even sometimes I get passive aggressive on my gratitude list. I'm grateful that I get to spoil my kids uh, so they can, you know, just be assholes or whatever I said. Babs responded, I'm grateful you get to spoil your kids. And I'm like, all right, cool. Thanks, Babs. Mm. Thanks. Captain perspective. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah ex exactly. This is why I say that I'm grateful that I'm an addict because it forced me to look at myself in the mirror flaws and all and a lot of normal people they're not forced they just they work their jobs they have their relationships they have their friendships and mm. a lot of them aren't forced to talk about feelings or forced to look at their shortcomings but because i'm an addict and because i chose recovery i was forced to look at that man in the mirror and say okay this is these are things that i like these are things that i don't like and how do we get to a place where I can be comfortable in my own skin. I got mad today because I picked up myself from camp and took him to the wife's work and got my subway. And when I got to work to eat it, my Dr. Pepper was watered down. No. The ice melted and it was you watered You gotta go down. no ice. I can't. I like ice. I like ice. In jail. No ice in jail. I just want a cup of ice so I bad. I just wanted them. A uh, vanilla milkshake. I used to trade three soups to the trustee who pushed the drinks yeah. for a bag of ice. Ice right? is a commodity. Oh, God. Even up the road. Yeah. Prison. Ice is big. I bet. You sell cups of ice for like five bucks a cup. That's crazy. Yeah. We could hop in a car right now and go to Starbucks. We should. It's... 
Okay. It's late. It's, 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 it's crazy. Okay. <laughs> but we could do that. We yeah. could never do that in active addiction. I wasn't no. spending money on Starbucks. Are you kidding me, dude? I was barely spending money on anything. No. Food? No. No. I was stealing. Do you guys ever ride your car on zero miles to empty with a prayer that you made it to your dealer's house and then you'd make a plan? Oh, God. I was the king of E. I had it mapped down to yeah. the quarter mile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I knew exactly. Like, I would get a paycheck, and I would spend it all on drugs. Yeah. And I would put $3.18 yeah, yeah. in Same. my car. I got yeah. a really funny story about that. So, I was, I had active warrants in Northport. That's a surprise. And it was a Charlotte County warrant. And the line for Sarasota and Charlotte County is price. And I was going down price, and it's pouring down rain, and um, I got my windshield wipers going, and I run out of gas on the side of the road. Boom. I pull off, and I'm sitting there. I'm using the phone, da-da-da-da-da, and then I pass out, right? The rain, it was just putting me to sleep. Love a good so rain. So I, I pass out, and I wake up to a knock on the window, and it's a cop, mm. right? And I... I wake up and it's 137 degrees in the car. I can't breathe. I'm pouring sweat. My ears are ringing. So I hear this, and I hear this, and I hear the cops say, and I'm I'm looking up at him and I'm like, oh my God, dude, I'm dying right now. I went to roll the window down, but the car was off. I couldn't do it. So I opened the door and he's like, and I said, what are you saying to me right now? I couldn't hear him. I thought my ears are ringing so bad, but it wasn't my ears. It was the windshield wipers going, skit, 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 skit. <laughs> and he was like, are you going to turn your windshield wipers <laughs> off? And I said, yeah. And I, and I turn them off. And then I, I, I fall out of the car. <laughs> I'm on the ground. I'm gasping for, for breath. And he doesn't run my name. But it was a Sarasota cop, so I'm thinking. My only thought was, I have to get on the other side of Price right now. Oh, because the Northport police. Yeah, because are the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to live in Northport. So he's like, "Do you need a ride?" Or I said, "No, man, I'm good. So, I'm out." Yeah. So he finds someone asleep in a car. Somebody called. Who doesn't understand English and falls out of the car onto the ground, and he's like, "You good? Can I?" Yeah, get- it was crazy. I thought it was a setup or something. I was like, these dudes are definitely going to be after me. He's going to let me get around the corner and then they'll be back. And they never... Wow. Yeah. Bless me. You ran, out of, you ran out of gas. Yeah. So how did you get around the corner? Oh, did yeah. you just walk? Yeah, I just left. <laughs> you just left, left the dipped. car? Oh, I'm out of there, dude. Of course. I don't even know if it was my car. I don't even know whose car it was. You know how it is, Pro- bro. You know what? Now that I think about it, I have a story about Price that was super sketchy That with a cop that definitely should have arrested me. Yeah. Um, where I was, I would drive 20 feet. I was so high and I would open the door and puke and I would close the door and I would drive like another 50 feet. And then I was doing that down price and a cop pulled me over and he said, man, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. He's like, all right, man. He's like, I think you probably should head home. I said, that's where I'm heading now. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going to my house. That's where I'm going to my house. You know what I mean? And he was like, all right, man, take care. Yeah. And just and I was like, Have a what? good one, partner. Yeah. Yeah, that was the only time I ever got blessed like that. I still think that there was something else going on. Mm. I feel like they were just letting me go because I was doing a lot of bad stuff then. I was selling a lot of drugs and stuff in Northport. And they like they had already raided my house a couple times and I wasn't there. So it was so weird for, like, they knew me. I know mm. they knew me. Mm. I know he's seen me before. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe I was just paranoid because I was on drugs. I used to work at that Applebee's. Hmm. I, we're telling Northport stories. <laughs> Over by, like, Aldi's? Sumter and Price. Okay. I also might be making that up. Yeah, no, I don't think there was an Applebee's there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember there being an I was just, like, There's being an Applebee's. Nice. It has a big apple on it. And it's yeah, I'm like, familiar with the Applebee's we, logo. We know, but we know the chain. I work there. Okay. In Northport. Yeah, in Northport. Because we're talking about... Northport. Okay. So you're not just trying to be relatable right I now? am. You are. I am. I just want to be part of the group. <laughs> did you work at Applebee's, though? I did. In Northport. In Northport. I I swear. I don't have any cool drug stories in Northport, so I just you came up with You weren't getting high when you worked at Applebee's? I was. 
Okay, well, that's, well, that's pretty cool. But that I in didn't... itself is pretty cool. You were you yeah. held a job down while you were getting high. I had to. Yeah. I was <laughs> shooting cocaine. Um, and Choo-choo. I stayed in the bathroom. And whenever they sat, I was serving at this point. I don't even know how I got that job. The manager would open the bathroom door and say, Hey, Flip, you got a table. And close the door and walk away. Hey, when you're done with that nod, bro, table 37 well, is Because when you for... shoot cocaine, you do it constantly. It's not yeah. like a you. It's not like opiates where you do it and then you chill for a while. Yeah. It's a constant... It's it, that sounds not fun. Oh, it was the worst. Yeah, I've never done that. I was, was a that? downer person. Me too. It doesn't sound like it. Well, but if you put it in front of me, okay, that's that's fair. I was a I was a anything, but my yeah, preferred yeah. was opiates. But the dishwasher sold cocaine, mm. and so it's convenient. We were besties, mm. and that was a terrible time in my life yeah. which I wish we could find the mugshot for the mugshots you posted mm. I couldn't find that mugshot yeah, you, from there you sent me like a really like sweet mugshot I was like that's give me only, your worst mugshot that's ever the only and you one sent I could me this find. mugshot you look like a ever, model yeah ever dude since? you look like Leonardo DiCaprio and I look like <laughs> half of my face just didn't show up to the party dude like half my face was still in the cop car bro I don't know what happened do you remember when you used to be able to type in your name and mugshot and it would pull up that's everything a, that's a blessing though now, ever since the you get that, a little separation, ever since, what was the name of the magazine? Gotcha. gotcha. Ever since the Gotcha got sued and had to shut down, <gasps> I think they. That's why they don't have it anymore. Oh my god! Because Shame. because what they were doing is somebody uh, contacted them and said you need to take down my mugshot, and they were basically um, what's that called? What's it called? Where you um, defamation of character? No, libel. It, no, it's like uh, it's a <laughs> court adjourned. Corduroy. Corduroy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, where it's um, it's like it's like blackmail. They were bas- they were basically blackmailing for large sums of money. Like, oh, you want your picture down? Okay, pay us ten thousand dollars and we'll take it down. Obviously, the police got involved and shut that whole thing down. That's the mugshot from when I first got to. I've been clean seven months. I was yeah, up you, you fifty look pounds. Great, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna I mean, redo that picture. What are you gonna do? Photoshop more of your face? Hey, I'm gonna take a picture of me right now and be like, "This was me in my active addiction." <laughs> My mug shots were hidden, and I think it's because my victim was a... It's not funny at all. Mm -mm. But I think it's because my victim was a police officer. If Mm. if you say it's not funny, you can't continue to smile and laugh. Okay, it's not... It's just... It's ironic, is what that was. When I get nervous, I laugh. Mm -mm. Because there's nothing funny about it. I destroyed his world, and broke his heart and it was horrible but it was ironic that my victim was a police officer because he was my boyfriend <laughs> and i was an IV drug user but anyway i think they hid my mug shop that makes sense because it had his address yeah and what'd mm. you what'd you do mm. why'd you have a mug shop why did i have a mug shop mm. we don't have to get it though. i got 20, 20 felonies Hell yeah. At one time. Because <laughs> uh, I'm stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. As is everybody in active addiction. Yeah. Right? I had never been in trouble before. Zero to a hundred. Real quick. And I didn't know. I'm like, when do I get my phone call? <laughs> <laughs> when do I get my... I, I watch know cops I all the time. <laughs> and I'd like a snack and a phone, please. <laughs> so I can go home. I did not know how it works. <laughs> it doesn't work like not that. Not even a little. No. And they <laughs> lied. Well, yeah. They tricked me during my interrogation. Oh, yeah. yeah you ain't never seen. Nah. I believed them. They seemed so real. They're like, we won't charge you with the guns if you just confess that you stole them. Yeah. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I took them. I did. I took them and I sold them for sure. For sure. Thanks for not charging me, by the way. That's really nice. And they're like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. And I got charged. And I didn't know that was legal. But now I do because I watch a lot of straight out of Compton. What? Straight out of Compton. Is that a movie? Yeah. Show? Movie. Straight out of Compton. Movie. Movie. So when I said I watch a lot of, you thought I meant I watch a lot of this movie? Yeah, like it's on repeat. <laughs> that's what I imagine. That's how I study. Yeah. You seem like a CSI law and order. Do you watch a lot of murder documentaries? Yes. Do you go to sleep listening to murder documentaries? 
If I showed you my sleep playlist right now, it would, you might not invite me over. Oh, that's super cool. So <laughs> I just like to be prepared. Yeah. For murder. I don't understand why that's a thing. And then, but no, no I get it. I understand how, how it's like, how it's like, uh, you know, like, it's like, I think the, it's gotten like trendy and cute and that annoys me because you it's, were with it from the jump. I was an OG. I just, I think it's so interesting to see the inner workings of people's minds and to have a conclusion and to see the clues that were there and like how they tried to cover it up. And I'm very much a storyline person, like a beginning, middle and end. There's no way to not make myself sound like a psychopath at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as somebody who has like a horrendous anxiety, I can't explain it. But listening to this stuff... To death and murder. Makes me feel like I can be prepared for any situation that comes my way. And calms you enough to get you to sleep. And then you sleep to it. Do you have nightmares? Yeah, what are you, what is your, what's, what's your, what's your dream looking like what's what's that your dream world i are you still dreaming of plane crashes <laughs> yes yeah but listen no 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 i have it set to two shows and then rain sounds okay so it goes through the two shows so there's a gap it goes two shows falling asleep asleep and then rain all night so let me tell you where i'm at with this my girl listens to them mm-hmm. and i usually have dreams where people are like pulling their intestines out and like hanging themselves. And then like she wonders why I'm waking up in the middle of the night and saying like our blood and stuff like that. Like I'm saying stuff like that. Okay. Fun, fun, funny point on that. He told me about the our blood thing and we're on WhatsApp because it's easier to send audio and pictures and stuff like that. And I tried to, (laughs) I mimicked that same thing on a voice recorder and, and I said, our blood except i didn't send it to him i sent it to my wife oh yeah <laughs> and my wife said yeah. what are you okay <laughs> like what's going on do you need do we need to talk That's like so funny. Yeah. i yeah. have so many questions yeah yeah um i have answers does she listen to it out loud is that why you hear it it is directly under my pillow i don't understand like the the phone and does she not listen to him with headphones no you don't want to fall asleep with headphones in. Yeah, they make sleep headbands. It's just a flush thing. It's Did you a, know it, about this? I didn't. It's a headband, and there's speakers that, in. Yeah. Right. She's fine. Are you, yeah, are you She's rich? Yeah. Are I'm you not so, rich. They're rich. like not. <laughs> she said, "You haven't heard of the sleep headband yeah. that was custom made by Giovanni Versace? The 20, shot. Twenty-four karat gold inlay. Beats, beats by Dre <laughs> came over to custom fit my head. <laughs> he came I'm, over personally. I'm I'm close, and she's wearing big rings, so I'm gonna They're stop nine dollars on Amazon. No, I'm, I was just saying that they look like they would hurt if you. I meant right, the so. headbands. Oh. I am. Why do you, punch. Why do you keep flicking me off when you say headbands? Because okay. they're very convenient. And expensive. And, well, I'm definitely going to look into that. I'm just wondering. So when you guys go to sleep, she puts it on and puts it under your pillow? (laughs) Or am I misunderstanding? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, you know, there's like a row of pillows. No. Such as on any bed, there's a row of pillows at the headboard, right? There's like three pillows. Boom, boom, boom. And then the phone's usually just somewhere... On that track, underneath the pillows. So it and doesn't charge at night. Yeah, there's a charger coming up over the bed. <laughs> Listen, we don't have headboards and stuff. Okay, okay, we're still living in the. So, do you remember earlier when I said that my wife must be mad at me because she's watching reality TV shows? I mean, I'm not saying that she's mad at you, but mm. to play a murder podcast, and I feel. I'm using I feel statements. I feel mm-hmm. that when you fall asleep, she slides it under. Oh, yeah, bro. She'll definitely get away with murdering me and getting rid of my body. For sure. And that's not what I was 100% talking about, but we can go there, too. I went there. Yeah, you did. Because I'm terrified. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm scared. And she's out front right now. I'm scared. Looking through the glass. I'm not going to lie to you. I am scared. Okay. I'm, after the fourth time, I got to yeah, check no, on you. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Do you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know 
what I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I I relate to her. And yeah. I just have headphones. No, you don't have headphones. <sighs> You have headband custom futuristic fitting. headband. Yes, I promise you from the metaverse. They're nine dollars. Louis Vuitton. Your rings are nine dollars, and the headbands nine dollars. These are from She Mass. wasn't talking about her rings. Yes, she was. No, I was never once. No, no, no. When there I was said, a there was a big misunderstanding. Yeah, there. when I said I'm gonna scoot over because her rings are big, and you were like, "These were nine dollars yeah. from TJ Maxx." Right. That's, but, These were nine dollars from TJ Maxx. And I was, these were nine dollars from TJ Maxx. Yeah, with the middle finger. Yeah, she and it's just it. a headband, but these are nine dollars from TJ. I'm with and him now. now. He's and, he's selling this so good. I'm with him now. I was then, kind of on the fence. And now the headband's nine dollars. Suspicious. Yeah. Suspicious. Roll back the tape. Did I mention I watch murder shows? And I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's really good. What uh, is my my wife calling me? I think I'm gonna walk my goldfish. Okay, so we got we got, we got we got Wanda at the front door and she's here, so this is it. <laughs> this is an intervention. This is no, this is murder. a murder scene. I um told my therapist today, I was like, she's like, How are you sleeping? And I was like, not super good. And she's like, Do you listen to like meditation music before bed? And I'm like, Do you mean dateline? <laughs> she's like not even a little that's not what i mean and i just got done telling her about all my intrusive thoughts where i like picture my loved ones getting murdered br- brutally yeah. and then she's like i wonder where it comes do you, from you have those thoughts like mm-hmm. during the day i had to go to exposure therapy for it while you're with them like oh yeah i'll be like sitting here with flip let's just for example flip but it, usually it's like people that don't deserve it, like my grandma mm. or like. Wait, it's almost you insinuated like, we'll use flip. And then you're like, well, no, it's normally people that don't deserve it, <laughs> yeah. which would lay the undertone that like I deserve to get brutally murdered. Continue. Sometimes. Okay. It's not brutally murdered. Okay. It's like a punch to the face as hard as I can. Like sometimes I'll be talking to like a customer at work or something and I'm not upset anything like that and i'll just imagine me just punching them right in the face <laughs> and then face. before you know it your fist my balled fist up. is balled up and i have to put it in my pocket yeah. or i have to like put it behind me and i looked it up there's a name for it what it's is called it? the imp of the perverse um i know like my intrusive thoughts are somebody that i care about getting hurt but it's like a scary movie in my head like i can actually see it I can see like... heart starts pumping. Yeah, I can see. And so I'm like, we can't play outside anymore. Come inside. Because I feel like it's final destination. Like I'm having so, a So just so I'm clear, I am currently sitting in between somebody that is picturing me punching me right in the face and knocking me out who won't stop playing with my non-corduroy pants <laughs> and somebody that can murder me and get away with it. That's what we're saying? Yeah. I mean, if you, you could word it that way. That's one way to... Well, that's to just... word it. Uh, when I was in exposure th- therapy, apparently there's a something, a type of OCD where people have a fear that they're going to hurt somebody and injure them. And so part of their exposure therapy is holding a knife and having someone turn their back to them. Like they don't want to do it. Let me ask you something. Do they like just pick a random person? Like who is this person that is turning their back to... So p- part of the exposure therapy is a loved one. Like if, if, if yours is centered around you're afraid you're going to hurt your loved ones, even though you don't want to, then they have the loved one come into the session and turn their back and you get a knife. And it's so that you can expose yourself to your biggest fear and see that you won't do it. So I'm just letting you know right now um, when you go to exposure therapy, um, you've already laid the tone that I deserve it. So I will not be turning my back. It's not a it's not a stab in the back thing. It's a punch to the face thing. I will not be exposing my face to your Sometimes fist. Sometimes I just imagine me punching your beard right off of your face. And because I love you, I'm like a brother. I love you so much. I want to punch your beard <laughs> off your face. I am so sweaty now. This is <laughs> not so sorry. This just got it very uh, interesting for everybody but me. Yeah, this was a good one. What are uh, are we done? I I don't know. How far are we? We're far. I'm sorry. We're farther than we've ever been. For being who I am. You've been <laughs> amazing. No, you have been you're amazing. An, you're an Listen, amazing person. 
I what? love this. You're an amazing person. Yes. Uh, this has been... Yeah. Relay that for me. Hey, you're amazing. I think so. He thinks so. Amazing person. I feel like you guys are overselling it. No. You're trying to convince no. me. And I appreciate that. I love validation. So, w- just for the record, right? Uh, something that's super cool. A little embarrassing. Super cool. Mm. When I first got clean, uh, at my two-year clean date, which coming up on seven in like... Bing, bang. Two weeks. Mm. Um, but at two years clean and did escape room, you were still in prison. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I always feel that, that maybe, maybe that's why you want to punch me in the face all the time. Prison, escape room. Me? Um, yes, you came. Okay. Um, and I had told you that I had an interest in doing podcasts. You bought me a bunch of podcast equipment, which was so cool and you have been a huge supporter of this from the beginning so i truly appreciate it Mm. um it's meant a lot and we're enjoying the ride and what a great first guest you know you've ruined it for every guest after this though (laughs) you have absolutely we can't set the bar so high yeah we can't have guests (laughs) i don't think we can have another guest who's gonna that would be dope our only guest ever i'd be honored also i feel like if you do have another guest you're going to be able to stick to subjects a lot better because no. my brain goes off. Every one of our episodes, we go and then we go down these. Remember, you know, we're like, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. It was never murder and punching beards off. I don't no. think we ever did. We talk about. I tried. I tried to keep it on there. I kept trying to bring us back. Yeah. But then eventually, I said, you know what? I just got to ride the wave. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you started talking about. Northport, yeah, you're like a, wiper. you're like a sheepdog, and, more like and, turning. Like, yeah, you're like. I, I was I was trying to, but at that point it was herding cats, and that's not a thing. So <laughs> no, I just let, let them run wild. You know cats. what I mean? I just right. let them run wild. Yeah. A for effort. And so uh, a lot of fun. I would like to say something. Yeah. There has not been one clip that you guys have sent me of your podcast that I haven't left out loud. And I think the reason I'm so excited to help you when you Thanks. need it is because I know. That it's gonna be amazing. And you two are just perfect. You feed off of each other perfectly. You have so much wise stuff to say, and I'm super stoked uh, to see where this goes because I think you're gonna do big things. All right, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Turn the lights off. Um, listen, uh, lock up when you're done. Uh, cut the lights. Uh, there's that. Uh, take everything. It doesn't matter. You want the keys to the house. I don't have them there hanging up. Um, Yep. So, uh, do you know how we end every podcast? Luke hates it. I absolutely love it. Come on, you dude. You kiss him? Not with a... <laughs> Sam with a... Why would... I don't know. I haven't seen it. How do you guys... <laughs> dude, dude, you've been rubbing my pants a little too much. Okay. What? How do you end it? You don't know. Don't, well, okay, but hold on. Before... before the... oh. You just got to go with it. You, but, but not yet. Okay. But not yet. Um... All the social medias are going to be linked in the description. Email is going to be linked in the description. Send us questions, topics, anything you want to talk about. Leave a review wherever you're listening to it. Five stars only. We don't accept anything below five stars. It's illegal. We don't want to see none of that. And five stars. If you do, just know that murder shows. Right. <laughs> punching people. So that's that. You know what I mean? Um, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a blast as always. Until next time, you know how we end it. Oh god! Oh god! I got a Charlie horse. This is oh not god. a track. Oh damn! I feel like. Oh god! I got a Charlie horse. I got a fart. Kind of like a beached <laughs> whale. Uh, we was in the trenches, not looked out.